So around a week ago, this game was released, Akiva Strip Hellbound and Debrief for the Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4 and for the PC. And I've seen a lot of people being interested in getting this but knowing nothing about the series. And I just want to give you a quick mini review and my recommendation and why you should probably not buy this. So Akiba's Trip is a Japanese series of action role-playing games. Uh, the enemy gets turned into vampires and you have to undress them so they burn in the sun. That's the whole idea. The cool thing about it is that you go into a recreated uh, Akihabara and you can use like anime figures as weapons and you have cool costumes. You can put on basically everything you can find and use it as a weapon. This here, you may recognize the name from Akiva Strip, Undead and Undressed on the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 3 and PlayStation Vita. And you may guess that this is a new game in the series and this is the first one. Uh, that's not the case. This one is a port of the first game. The first game came out in Japan on the PlayStation Portable. It got an upgraded version, I think a year later, and then it got a sequel on PlayStation Vita, PlayStation 3, and later on PlayStation 4. And this one was released in the West, uh, this one was not. This is the first release of it. The main problem is that they made no improvements compared to the PlayStation Portable version. The resolution is higher, now it's in English, and I think the PSP one didn't have voice acting, but I'm not sure about that. So otherwise this one looks like a PlayStation Portable game from 2011. Uh, the graphics are the same. The UI, the navigation, there are definitely things that would have needed improvement for a 2021 release, if you ask me. I mean, the box is nice, has a nice little inlay there, but you're getting it for the game. And in my opinion, I mean, it's 40 euros, so it's a budget game, so I can excuse some of the shortcomings, but they should have put a lot more work into this. And if you have never played a game in the series, there's also the spin-off Akiba's Beat, uh, but that's not part of the main series. Uh, there are two different games that you can play. That's the new one here, and Akiba's Trip 2 in Japan, as it's known. Here it was released at the first game in the West. This improves almost everything from the original game. The graphics, even though they still look like a Vita game, uh, are 10 times better, uh, even compared to the modern release. Uh, the gameplay, the combat system, the amount of weapons, equipment you can get, the size of the map, all of it is bigger, better, and that's where my point comes in right here. You should not even think about getting this if you have not played this game before. This is better in every way. The one, imp the one improvement I would say here, or the one thing I like better, is uh, the anime art design I think is a lot more interesting in part one. This is more like standard modern day anime. This one looks a bit more interesting if you ask me, but that's a matter of taste as well. So both of them are not very long games, but this one gives you a lot more replay value. Uh, here you have different paths, uh, different side characters you can have, uh, and different romance options uh, over the course of the story. Here it's basically one playthrough. There are multiple endings, multiple things you can do, but not nearly the amount of variety you have in the sequel. So this release is really just for the people who played and loved part two. I already beat it. Uh, it took me less than 10 hours, even with doing a lot of side quests. And I like it enough to do a second playthrough, going for some of the additional endings. But every newcomer to the series should play the sequel before they even touch the port of the original. Still a fun game, but not nearly as good of fun as the sequel. So. Thank you for watching. I hope I could help you, uh, some of you make an informed buying decision on this one. And I see you again in the next video. Bye.